Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. I want to summarize the story that was brought on in the first uh, hour when we had Daniel Weber on was amac.us, amac.us. Uh, Tim Alexander popped in, and um, he may be able to pop back on the air if we can get him. Uh, the announcement was basically the Israelis are, are fueling up their uh, their advanced nuclear missile uh, squadrons. Uh, Tim, yeah, Tim, why don't you give those two stories again, because uh, it's going to highlight what we're going to talk about today in the Chapter uh, 18 of the book, the Forbidden Secret with uh, Jonathan Gray in New Zealand, probably one of the best archaeological biblical researchers in, in history. His website is beforeus.com, and I tell people it's required reading if you want to listen to this program and truly understand it to read all of the Before Us books that are ebooks, probably one of the best formats. In fact, I'm writing ebooks that are going to have multimedia in them, and I think this is a fantastic format. It's the Master Suite CES 6.0, which I purchased, so I'm going to be doing some ebooks. But Jonathan's research is stellar. And it's going to tie in with your announcement. Uh, you're a fantastic military geopolitical researcher. Your website is europebusiness.blogspot.com, and you can search by going to Lord Sterling or Tim Alexander and find it. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Europe. Uh, Lord, Lord, Sterling, Sterling, Europe. Europe. Lord Sterling Europe, and they're going to find it. So what are these two stories that are coming out? And, uh, you know, we're literally seconds to midnight, not minutes like the atomic clock scientists talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, first story, uh, Russia, China, Syria, and, and Iran will be uh, conducting possibly yet this month, and it's the 19th, by the way, so, but uh, yet this month, uh, and at the early in July, uh, the largest uh, military maneuvers uh, war games in Middle East history, uh, 90,000 plus uh, troops, 400 plus uh, fighters, um, and, uh, you know, 900 tanks. And uh, the Chinese have notified the Egyptians that they plan to transit a dozen naval air, uh, a dozen uh, naval craft through the Straits of, uh, or through the uh, 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 so, now. Yeah. so we're looking probably, uh, there's probably one or two support ships. So it could be as many as three, but usually a couple. Uh, so you're looking at probably ten uh, destroyers and frigates yeah, from the yeah. Red Chinese Navy. Now, now that, that ties that, also with the Greek, uh, the Greek vote, which is just very, very marginal in terms of voting for the European bailout, but they don't want the austerity fascism. At the same time, I have reports, and, and a number of people, including Steve Quayle, put out reports, that suggests that the run on the banks in Spain, Greece, and Italy has already been happening at an enormous pace where people are pulling out billions of dollars right. per week. Yeah, so, Steve Quayle so, has been saying basically some of his contacts, I think. Uh, uh, I'm getting similar re- re- information, yeah, that, that, which means basically anybody who's got money is... Scared. Yeah, inside, inside people, people are pulling their money like crazy out of the country, and they don't want to say that this is happening, but it's not just a Greek problem. It's an Italian and a Spanish problem is that billions of dollars are taking flight out of their banks and economies. And uh, it's almost like it's you're bailing out the... Europe. Yeah, you're bailing out the... Just, it's not just the, the so-called pigs, the... Uh, yeah. Right, so uh, right, and the German uh, bonds last week. This is the biggest story. Where zero percent bonds, where the German investors and billionaires around the world that invest in German bonds now are willing to take zero percent, which is absolutely mind-boggling. It's like you're at the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. So uh, those stories well, are pretty there's a, important. There's another story on that, by the way. Uh, 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 Goldman is now warning of the possibility of a 50 to 70 billion flow program. In other words, uh, the next quantitative easing will involve the mass printing of 50 to 70 billion dollars a month by the Fed. So well, we're, can we we're, say we're, hyperinflation? Well, here's what's going to happen. We're, we're heading to what I call tax Maggedon, where the tax rates are going to go through the ceiling starting early and later this year, early next year. We're also facing uh, a wall where basically they're going to have to refinance the debt ceiling, and it's going to come into a lame duck uh, government uh, pre or post the election. And on top of that, we have now Gushan, which is this giant Class 5 cyclone heading directly toward northern Japan and Fukushima that's going to spread radiation like crazy. And our reports on the ground are that reactor number two has gotten two and a half times hotter, is venting off radioactive tritium, and that cooling pool number four, they haven't replaced those two pumps, so it's ready to explode any day now. 
Well, uh, the level of radiation that's we estimated. The, that's the key. That's the that's the whole ball game because if that right. puppy goes. Well, here, here's the facts. I, I've got reports we talked about last Thursday, and I posted them up over the weekend, uh, that the levels, this is, I posted up on Friday, the levels of radiation, this is published in, by a nuclear scientist, and I have the actual PDF report before they pulled it off the website. We got a, full, a screenshot and the PDF uh, document from the scientist in April that if reacting pooling cool four goes, it'll be 80 to 300 times the radiation release uh, Fukushima if only 10% of those fuel rods blow. So if 10% blow, if 100% of them blow or explode... Uh, of Chernobyl, we're, you mean. Okay. We're, no, no, we're talking about the massive radiation release of March 11th, which is many oh, okay. times, many, okay. is 100 times or 300 times more than Chernobyl. Yeah, the amount okay. of radiation will be released could be potentially up to 3,000 times more radiation than March 11th last year, which is many tens of thousands of times more radiation than, than Chernobyl. And it'll persist it, it for means months that and years. A whole lot of people in the northern hemisphere are going to die. Well, and it's it variously. It, it's an interesting fact, though. What happens is, the weak and the frail will die because they aren't in what's called a compensation zone. There are people that survived Fukushima, that survived Nagasaki and Hiroshima in their 80s. Those people had miso soup. They took antioxidants. They did other things, and they survived it. So, as long as your body can replace damaged cells, you can survive. In fact, if anything, low-level radiation is actually healthy for you. If you're drinking water that flows over radioactive rocks, and we're going to have some experts talking about that, because the, the the molecular signature of those radioactive elements actually stimulates enzymes to protect you from radiation. Interestingly. Uh, if you have an animal growing in a non-radioactive environment and you expose them to just normal ground-level radiation, it kills them pretty quickly. So without enzyme induction, you'll die exposed to radiation. So low-level radiation, if it's not external internal fleas, is actually beneficial to you, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, uh, let, me, let me finish with where I yeah. was at. Yeah. Okay, the first thing, uh, they're, they're having this massive war game. It's not really a war game. This is This is putting in the heavy stuff. This is... This is a, yeah, you're drawing a line through the word troops, navy, yeah. and air force in mass in Syria. This is the ultimate line in the sand to the uh, globalist and Netanyahu Zionist aggressors who are determined to break up Syria and to use Syria as the back door to a war with Iran and a general Middle Eastern war. What the Russians and Chinese are saying is if you do this, you will be battling us. And they have been warning multiple times of nuclear war and World well, War Three. Okay, that's well, one thing. Here's, it, here's the, second, the second news thing I have for you. Yeah. According to uh, World Net Daily, which is normally a, a, a very pro-Israeli site, uh, Israel has taken its Jerichos out of their caves. Uh, they're fueled, uh, they're, they're solid fuel anyway, but they're fueled, uh, and the nuclear warheads have been placed on them, and they're being dispersed uh, uh, on their, uh, their firing sites. Now, the Jericho 2 is an IRBM, intermediate range ballistic missile, capable of hitting most places in Iran and a large part of the Middle East. The Jericho 3 is a ICBM. Depending on uh, how much throw weight they, they they put on it, they can lob a nuclear warhead almost anywhere, uh, even North and South America, certainly anywhere in Russia and uh, most of China. So what Israel uh, is moving to do is to counter-threaten uh, to strike against Russia and China, as well as Iran, Syria, and uh, uh, with nuclear warheads. So this is extraordinarily serious. It's never happened before. Also, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's sent its uh, uh, submarine fleet, its German uh, uh, subs out so with their nuclear warheads. Which are, by the way, the most advanced diesel non-nuclear subs in the world. Yes, they are. And they're yeah. about to take delivery of a fourth one. They may actually... I heard they already had a delivery was literally on its way over there. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, Tim, stay there because I want to talk about some economic uh, consequences, and we're going to deal with the amazing story with Jonathan Gray of Chapter 18, and we'll tie it all together when we come back. Welcome back. Welcome um, back. Jonathan, we heard uh, some of the news. I want to hear your response, and then we'll get into your book. And uh, I want to hear from 
from uh, Tim because I think this fits into the timeline we were talking about. Also, there's a lot of cults out there that think that somehow that uh, when the state of the world gets bad, there are various cults, including the cult within Christianity that believes that there's going to be a physical rapture, that people are going to be raptured out, when in fact Jesus answered the disciples and says, when you see the vulture, which is in Aramaic meaning the, 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 literally the vulture, <laughs> uh, there is the, the body. And he's really saying that the evil will bind themselves together and be taken out like the tares. It talks about the tares being bound together and taken away from the wheat crop. The wheat crop is still in the field. The tares are taken out, not the wheat. Uh, that we're going to be saved from our own devices and from galactic and cosmic disasters, uh, things like Fukushima, by, quote, an alien intervention, which is purely demonic and purely the fantasy of globalists that want to literally saute us in satanic worship uh, that now is part of our big screen TV, uh, our television shows, the vampirism, the the occult is, is saturating everywhere. And... Uh, Tell us your comments uh, when you hear this news, Jonathan. Well, I, I certainly see this as something bigger than human, uh, Bill, that's taking place. And uh, I have evidence that we are in the middle of a enormous uh, spiritual feud between two great powers of good and evil, and that they hate the human race and they want to bring it down to destruction. Uh, and they are actually uh, posing as extraterrestrials, and they're also posing as the dead loved ones of, of the bereaved. And this way, they've got a channel through to the heart. Exactly. Now, um, Tim, w w either way, if you look at, you know, in other words, you walk into the ICU and you see a patient that doesn't look well, and they're unconscious, they're on IVs, they get her intubated, they've got a transaortic uh, heart pump because their heart's in heart failure, they're on dialysis, uh, they've got burns to say 60% of their body, they're just about dead. So and there's half a dozen... going out drinking and partying the next night. No, and the fact is that, that <laughs> that's the state of the current world. And in what God's basically saying, and I, and I had some interesting discussions last week, and I want to bring this up because I have a lot of people listening that want to hear it straight. What's different about the Nutra Medical Report, Clay and Iron Show, from any other program on this or any other network, radio and television, or books, is that we're going to tell it to you straight. We're not going to mince things. We're not going to kind of play with things. And when we do have things, we'll try to clarify it. If I do make mistakes or I don't amplify it, I'm going to amplify it. And we had on the program uh, last week, we had uh, the author of The Harbinger. Now, uh, you're an expert on this, on the occult. And when you actually listen to the book, and I read through a, a chunk of it, so I get a, a much better perspective, but I've had a chance to talk to some ministries, one over the weekend from uh, North Carolina, about concerns about the Harbinger, because it sold millions of copies. It, it's been put on the Sid Roth show, on Jim Baker. It's been put on uh, shows with all these top, quote, evangelists. <laughs> I've got some other terms for them sometimes. But they have a, quote, a prophet who is unnamed, who uses, quote, psychic abilities to know where the other person is, who's going to give them all these seals. And the entire book is about judgment, but it doesn't talk about the corruption. The comments made by Johnson when I asked him bluntly by phone after the show, I said, you know, these people like um, Mr. John Edwards, uh, Tom Daschle, these are high-level Masons. They knew full well when they are putting out scriptures like Isaiah 9:10 that they are the ones that are defiant. They're not just doing it by a mistake. These people are intelligent people that are malevolently evil, and they worship the dark side. You don't get advanced into politics until you go to Bohemian Grove or you belong to these secret orders or you lay in skull and bones or stay in the crypt the, uh, for a year and uh, do your sexual fantasies half-naked in, 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 a, in a coffin, as uh, George Bush did with uh, John Kerry. You don't. I mean, the fact is, if you're advanced in the world, if you're in high-level politics of any stripe whatsoever, you're by one name, stripe, or uh, calling, whatever religious background, in one form or another, of the ancient Tower of Babel, Masonic, pantheistic devil worship. And, I would uh, say that's, that's true of, of most, uh, almost everybody in in uh, uh, the world of politics today. Uh, yeah, at a at a high level. Uh, well, that's why when we when we say well, there's white hats and there's black hats, and recently we had the situation with Ron Paul. Well, Ron Paul, everybody has known this. It took some research on our part. 
I have to thank my wife, Michelle, who did a lot of research on it. We know that Ron Paul has got some good policies and some very bad ones, but Ron Paul and his entire family are high-level Masons. We know that Mitt Romney is a high-level Mason. We know that Obama is a 32nd degree Mason. If you're not a Mason or controlled by them, you don't get ahead in politics. And the fact is that when we have uh, we call uh, fables made by a prophet that's unnamed that uses psychic and other abilities uh, to but, to you give know, the rules of judgment. About but stuff like that. Well, when I we mean, have said, let me finish this comment though. When we have uh, pro- prophets that are given in a fable, which is an, a, a uh, story or a, a fable that isn't based on reality, but talks about real judgment, how seriously can you take it when you won't? recognize that 9-11 was a self-inflicted wound, that it was caused by our government demolition of those towers. How can you take it seriously when you say these people didn't know when they're pronouncing Isaiah 9-10, Tom Daschle, uh, who was head of the Senate at the time, the day after 9-11, or John Edwards when they're basically talking about the One World Tower and then they're putting in the Gazette Stone. No, these people are insolent, satanic minions of hell, and they're fully aware of what they're doing, and in fact, that's why they move ahead. The fact is, when you have someone who speaks so prophetically and won't point the fingers not only at those they quote called the terrorists with the boogeyman that justifies international wars to take people's oil in Iraq and poison the country with depleted uranium, but the uh, the greater Israel philosophy of people net, like Netanyahu and Lieberman is not based on a aliyah of all the peoples of Earth returning to Israel. It's based on the idea that we will take their land because we have a God-given right to own it. And just like uh, uh, the uh, false fire that was brought into the temple by um, James and Jambri, and they were rebuked by God himself. Remember the sons of Eli? People don't know their scriptures. The fact is, we have those who want to speak prophetically, but they don't want to act, act in the office of a prophet. And, uh, you know, I'm going to show great concern for those who spread the word to millions of people who are basically see judgment coming to America, but they don't want to see the corruption that's the basis for it. How could a nation, how could someone believe that 1600 degree JP at jet fuel could bring down the towers and vaporize millions of tons of steel covered with two you inches of asbestos. Because you're either ignorant or you're willfully ignorant. Willfully ignorant because what you want to do is you want to say America's under judgment. We won't talk about the fact that there's an actual transcription of the of the dialogue between uh, Dick Cheney and uh, Mr. Mineta, Senator Mineta, actually in the bunker talking to military personnel about the fact that they should have did a shutdown order. And I know from my military context that we had two-man teams that could have gone to the roof of the Pentagon and shot off Stinger missiles and turned that jet aircraft into a, a pile of confetti before it hit the Pentagon, our military headquarters. So uh, what we need to realize here is that corruption occurs not because we have a, a very tall, renal failure, Tim Osman, otherwise known as Osama bin Laden, dying in a cave in Afghanistan on dialysis, who could somehow put blips on our screen and make towers disappear through the magic of Islam. No, what we have is we have a demonically energized government. And when you speak prophetically, you must pronounce that the corruption occurred inside, just like in ancient Israel, in our nation, in the bowels of our nation that worships devils. That's what we're dealing with. There and when you have a and the mother of mother-in-law of Obama has a Sundaria altar, a voodoo altar, right in the White House. Welcome back, and uh, let's switch gears back to Jonathan. Jonathan Gray, of course, your website is beforeus.com. Now we want to stretch people. We tell, don't tell people what to think. What we want them to do, though, is is entertain these issues to the point where they can change their perspective and ask better questions. When they hear and when they read this book, The Forbidden Secret, Chapter 18, what's there? What did, what did you find? Of course, you have tremendous history going back to your father uh, and uh, an understanding of these issues that has a lot to do with what our time is. The great deception is upon us, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, we're really there now. It's nothing, not in the future. It's right here with us right now. And uh, I'd like to say, Bill, that there's a confirmed connection between UFO occupants conversing with men and the various experiences associated with modern Satanism and the occult. Right. I can give lots of case histories, many personal ones in, in that connection. Uh, and in case our listeners don't know, Avatar, the Witch's Christ, is also the Christ of the New Age movement. 
witchcraft believes that this avatar will come in a saucer and precede the coming of the New Age Christ. So there's a confirmed link between them. Uh, a guy that I know, Richard Morneau, who, when he was in the Church of Satan, heard a high priest explain that Satan and his hosts were going to land on the earth in UFOs and tell world leaders that the world will be destroyed by a cosmic calamity, but if they cooperate with them, the world can be saved. And the connection with witchcraft is unmistakable. Well, isn't that interesting? That's because that's, that's what a lot of uh, people bizarre, believe, the bizarre beliefs of people like... Uh, um, these various pro I didn't even want to mention their names. <clears throat> they don't need, deserve mention, but some of these people like, um, <laughs> I won't mention it actually. I, I don't think it's worthwhile. But I think what it is is people should realize that there's a lot of cults out there that are, when things get more and more evident, for example, if Fukushima blows, if the economy crashes, if we see the actual approaches as Brazilian astronomer we're trying to get on the program, show the scientific evidence that's now going to get out into the public psyche and knowledge through the regular media, not just the uh, blogosphere and the internet, that the uh, I call the Class 3 Red Dwarf Star, I call the Heraculibus, they call it the Destroyer, uh, Abaddon, Apollyon, the Goddess of Destroyer. That's the 17th level of the of the York Rite of Masonry, is to understand the Destroyer is part of, quote, the Godhead, what they uh, accept as being the powers of the dialectic that they get control of because they know when it returns. And Moses knew about this because he was trained in the school of the high priests in ancient Egypt. They knew about the return of the destroyer. The destroyer I call the Passover star is coming back into our solar system, but it's not going to... You know, God preserved the ancient Hebrews, so he can preserve us. But it's not going to be through, you know, being rescued by aliens or transdimensionals or it's going to be rescued by... It's going to be rescued by us, number one, repenting of us cooperating, of us listening to the voice of the Most High God and using our intellect and our spiritual connection with the Creator to do things so we can survive what's coming. Uh, but certainly we're not going to be saved by thinking that, you know, if we just simply, uh, you know, become good New Agers or worship these trans-dimensional entities that uh, otherwise are the Nephilim, the fallen ones, that we're going to be saved from these disasters. The real issue is, are we repentant? Are we teaching people that heaven and hell starts today. It doesn't start at the evident day of your death. That's only when it becomes self-evident as exactly what your position has already been. You're either alive in God or you're dead right now. Well, you're living dead now if you don't believe in God. Right. Well, the thing is, your life, 10,000 or a million years from now, does your life mean anything other than an archaeological dig if there's anything left? Uh, it does mean something if there's eternity, if there's a creator God that loves you, even if your physical body, like Job said, even though he destroyed me, yet in my own flesh will I see my creator. People don't understand that the connectedness on a higher spiritual realm with a creator God uh, is the very basis of why America is a republic, because it's not based on the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, but on acceding to the fact our rights come from our creator. And every other nation on earth, and that includes New Zealand, Australia, Europe, etc., every other nation on earth, like going right back to Israel until it fell, has not been a republic. It's been a democracy, a communistic state, a, a royal state of feudal uh, control. Uh, and the only nations, uh, the only government that's acceptable to God is a republic. And uh, that's a very problem because our republic has dissolved from the inside. And the latest corruption is a corruption of Obama and the other fools that are destroying it from the inside. And uh, these churches, basically, and including the so-called ministries, that prophesy falsely. And you don't pronounce judgment without seeing the roots of the judgment. It's like going in and saying, gee, all your true trees are giving no fruit, when you have gophers eating the roots of your trees. You have to pronounce why the trees are dying, and then find, provide a solution for it if you're a true prophet. You cannot speak judgment without speaking the causes for the judgment, can you? No, no way. And you, can, you have to point fingers at those, even if you upset people. If you, quote, don't want to go there and don't want to pronounce judgment, how useful is that to people other than frightening them uh, into uh, thinking that judgment's coming, judgment's coming, 
we must get the quote the terrorists that have done it. No, the terrorists didn't do 9/11. The terrorists were actors guild. They were in the aircraft that were probably hit by nerve gas and taken away because there were E10s with pods under them that struck those buildings with radio beacons inside the towers because you couldn't thread the needle. And those buildings couldn't come down with a 707, which they were built to, or 9.5 earthquake, so they were dissolved from the inside by nuclear weapons. And I've been blocked, as latest as last year, three labs, a lab in Japan, a lab in Spain, and a lab in Germany. All blocked me, and here in America, I was told if I order the tests, I, Dr. Deagle, will be arrested for requesting neutron plasma spectroscopy. They want to pawn off other stupid tests. I said, what do you think I am? Oh, you're an MD. I said, no, no. I have advanced training in nuclear physics and radiochemistry. Oh, well, if you request that test, we have to notify the Department of Defense, and they're going to be knocking on your door asking why you're doing the test. You'll probably be arrested. That's what I was told. So people need to grasp this. You need to know they're going to hear things in this show. They're not going to be smothered in the butter of, you know, of rubbed on your itching ears. We're going to scream the truth, even if you have your fingers in your ears, so it's going to make your skull vibrate, and the truth will get to your head, because there'll be no excuses when the time of destruction comes that America either does repent or does not repent, or any other nation. That's where we're at. So, Jonathan, when we, let's talk about this, your, your history of your father, and the history of, of how bad this really is in terms of the the... Uh, the so-called alien rescue, the trans-dimensional rescue. Uh, I'd like to tie up, Dr. Bill, the connection between this and, and Satanism. Uh, it's unmistakable. Now, over there in your country in Ohio, witches, I understand, routinely conjure up at their covens and their meeting places, spacecraft and their aliens in their witches' covens. And every time they do this, there's a rash of UFO sightings in the vicinity. And uh, the Ohio town where this occurs is known for frequent sightings of saucers, and many photos of saucers have been taken by observers there. And the Ouija board connection is proof positive of the nature of the saucers. They emanate from the same loco same uh, source. You heard about the uh, German Society for the Society of the Black Sun and the Theosophist Society. They were using these transdimensional technologies of spiritual... Uh, <clears throat> spiritual hyperscience where they were actually were using these these are signs that the that the professors of Hogwarts Castle would be proud of oh yes absolutely now I'd like to mention very quickly about a dozen points of convergence here between the ETs and the seance spirits right. if I may do so absolutely uh, the first one is both UFO aliens and seance spirits, spirits that appear in seances, appear, can appear temporally as physical beings. Now, this may be new to some people, but it's a reality we'll have to face. What we right. call aliens can be present with us in an invisible state. They can make themselves only partially visible, or they can appear temporally as totally physical. And this is true of both UFO, so-called occupants, and the appearances at spiritualistic seances. And uh, the, the leading UFO researchers, uh, Ankenberg and Weldon, uh, have cited numerous, uh, un unbelievably uh, uh, numerous uh, manipulations of uh, physical phenomena that have been noticed in, in both the UFO situation and in the seance. They're identical, absolutely. Appearing temporally as physical beings and, and partly visible, partly invisible. Now, the second point is that both the UFO aliens and the seance spirits appear in all sorts of guises and shapes. Keep that thought. We'll be right back with Jonathan Gray. Beforeus.com. The book is the for. <clears throat> Welcome back to the uh, Nutramedical Report. Clay and Iron Show. Why is it called Clay and Iron? Because the it says they shall mingle themselves, the iron with the clay, with the seed of men, which means the physical flesh, the husks of humanity, our so-called ruling leaders like Obama, Hillary Clinton, etc., all the ruling leaders of all the major corporations, governments, the Bohemian Grove, the Bilderberger meeting, all these people we worship the powers of darkness. In fact, if you go through the Masonic realms and study, you find that you actually have gone through every single ancient Sumerian, Egyptian, and Greek god, and by the time you reach the 17th level, you get taught that the destroyer, Abaddon or Apollyon, is the god of that level of Masonic order. And all of these are tied right back into pantheistic uh, issues such as 
the idea that the Nibirans or the Andromedans are going to save us and that we are literally the children of the Nephilim. That's what they're trying to tell you. They're trying to tell you that the aliens created us in the ancient times, such as uh, the Vandanikans, uh, chariots of the gods. And this is the great evil that's about to come upon the earth when the earth is in such a cataclysm as it's coming toward world war, environmental collapse, Fukushima, and we're heading into an ice age in the midst of an economic destruction that's occurring when mankind should be celebrating a move to a third millennium that is godly and not destroyed. But we have, because we have not repented, we have been listening to the voices of darkness and not of light. Yes, that is true. Uh, getting back to the the connection between uh, Satanism and the C and the uh, ETs, uh, we did mention just before the break, Doctor Bill, that both UFO aliens and spirits and seances appear in any number of guise and shape. Uh, they can create an illusion. They can also manipulate vibrational frequency, and uh, of course, appear as anything that they want to appear, even impersonate. Uh, well-known celebrities, the Pope, Jesus, uh, whoever, uh, and get away with it. And people think that they're actually seeing those personalities. Uh, the, even the dead loved ones who are so close uh, and worse before they die, they, they have such a large knowledge of each person that uh, I mean, they're watching us all the time too. And uh, they are very, very good at manipulating energy to appear in whatever guise they wish. Exactly. Now that is, that's true of both UFO aliens and Sion spirits. Well, basically, the way I like to do, refer to it, I know a lot of people call them uh, uh, UFOs, I call them IFOs, identified fiendish objects. Well, I think that's more correct, yes, absolutely, because they're not unidentified, we've identified them. You're right. In fact, even if you take atheists like uh, Stephen Hawking, he said, look, thinking on an intellectual level, if we were unwise enough to actually be picked up by, a uh, quote, a a race of alien beings, the most likely thing that any being that would cross the galaxy that would identify us would be a predatory race who would be likely to consume us, dominate us, and destroy us like cockroaches as they approach the planet with superintelligence. But the fact is we're facing a superintelligence of dark majesty of evil that's not as intelligent as the infinite intelligence of our creator, but we're in a battle, a cosmic battle, where bat where Earth literally is on the, if you want to call it, on the fault line of this, this zone of destruction, and we're coming up to the time when the final battles are about to occur. Guys, I, yeah. have, a, uh, I have a theory, and the theory is that uh, while there may, you know, in the quadrillions of planets that are no doubt in the universe, uh, there's probably enormous numbers of uh, intelligent life farms, but we're being kept from them because we... We failed. Uh, we had in the Garden of, uh, of uh, Gethsemane, or in the uh, uh, Garden of Eden, we failed, and we're in this time period that uh, in this age that we the Redeemer has come, and now He will eventually come back. But right now, we're not really fit to be uh, in the company of good races of people that are intelligent. Uh, we're very much in 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 a very deep spiritual battle between good and evil. And I think well, yeah, we haven't like evolved it. yet. We haven't got through that yet. Well, it's not even evolution. Uh, says, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with what Tim is saying. Uh, that this earth actually is, uh, is temporarily put under quarantine because of what's going on here. Yeah, in fact, uh, the, the fact of, uh, I like the term that uh, Alex uses calling it, prison planet. It has, it's not a matter of it becoming a prison planet. It's been a prison planet since the fall. And uh, I also want people to clarify the fact that we, our God is only capable of good, so we're not going to have a millennial reign, as we talked about this last time. Uh, God has already allowed us to rule and reign with him, but we haven't picked up our scepter. So the reason why evil abounds, why 55-plus million babies are dead, what we have the, on the verge of nuclear war, is not because God hasn't allowed us to rule and reign. It's because there's so few of us who have picked up our scepter and ruled as the sons and daughters of the Most High, which means we have that authority to be co-creators with God when we shema, hear and do his will, and we live our life not for ourselves, not even for our families, but for the Creator first, 
and only that God will bless us with longer life, with a safe world, where a world where without pollution, without destruction, without war, without want, where we plant our tree and eat the fruit thereof, as he said in Isaiah, the first scripture he read, and we can build a home and live it there and pass it on to our descendants. That's not the case because we have not repented, and we've had 2,000, which is a double order of grace to us in the time of destruction of this planet, and this world is coming, if we do not yet repent. And when people prophesy falsely and said, yes, judgment's coming, but they won't talk about the roots, it's like saying, well, your fruit trees are dying, but I'm not going to tell you that you have gophers eating the roots because I don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, now, <clears throat> Bill, as, as I was saying, uh, the, the, these convergences are, uh, there are so many of them, but both the, uh, the so-called aliens and the Seon spirits can visibly change shape in front of a person, uh, and very frequently they can change into a reptile, reptilian shape, which fits, of course, with uh, the old serpent called the devil. Right. And this is true of both uh, Seon spirits and UFO aliens, or IFO aliens, as, right. as, which you so well call them. <laughs> And they can they can also both appear as beings of light, surrounded by great um, and, and beauty of light. and beauty, of course. And beauty, uh, but they can also both groups uh, can appear pass through walls. Uh, both groups say they're here to help us. Both groups tell us that we can be as gods. They both give identical predictions. I've, I've got these documented uh, in, in, in my book. Um, both groups reveal information that's known, they think, only, uh, they thought uh, only to the hearer, or the hearer thought only he knew that information, but they have revealed, both groups have revealed it to him. Both of them can possess their victims. Both can sometimes speak through trance mediums. Now, when I say both, I'm saying that they're the same group of people. The, the, the uh, modus operandi identifies them as the, same, as the same individuals. These are the rebellious uh, angels under Satan, under Lucifer, who were cast out of heaven and are now masquerading as beings that they are not. And they've taken over this world pretty well through the political system. Exactly. Now, people who I think, why is this peripheral? Well... Uh, one of the problems, and, and, and you mentioned very interestingly, Tim, because you know about, you worked with uh, Burke's Peerage, and you realize that there's something different about the so-called royals of Europe. <clears throat> it's not that they're necessarily evil, but you notice that this, whether it's in ancient cultures or the native cultures, there's specific shamanic lines, bloodlines, that are more sensitive to being able to pick up the, if you want to call it the spiritual realm. Okay? And you'll hear it in two families. good and bad. Right, it could be good and bad. If it's given over to the Most High God, you become a priest of the Most High God and you're a Kohen. If, you're, if it's used for bad, you become an evil shaman and summon demons and do horrifying things. And what, what I'm trying to say is I think what's happened is <clears throat> these bloodlines are peoples that have this innate capacity that have become the royal bloodlines, the rulers of the world, but they've been given over to powers of darkness by being cursed by their ancestors. And uh, that's how we've been yeah, ruled. But saying, we're Dr. ruled Bill, by people uh, of clay and iron, in other words. Ruled by, by people of clay Ma, and iron. Ma Rothschild, the founder of the Rothschild Empire, had five sons that he sent to various places in Europe to, to begin his empire, like Vienna and Paris and, right. and, and so forth. Uh, they had 18 children. Sixteen of those 18 married their first cousins. And uh, I believe that uh, a big part of that is not just wanting to keep the wealth. Uh, you yeah, know, fairly tight, but it's some people are born with an innate ability, uh, a spiritual ability to communicate uh, with spiritual beings far more than others, and uh, of course that can be a very good thing. Well, let me uh, let me tell you what the, the evil thing. Let, let me tell you the substrate of that. The people with that capacity, if you actually do autopsies of their brain, you find they have enormously high concentrations of magnetite in their pineal gland. Interesting. Interesting. A magnetite. And we can talk about this more at a later date, but that's one of the things. There is a genetic and a biological substrate to this that can be used for good or evil. And, uh, of course, our world is ruled by those powers of darkness. So when Bohemian Grove starts here in a matter of weeks, it's all based on the idea that they don't read the newspaper. They make the newspaper happen because they use the powers of darkness. And, of course, these entities that people want to worship to try to save our world is not. They need to repent and serve the Most High God only. With our science and technology being subservient to man and the spirit of the Creator. 
Thank you, Jonathan Gray. Amazing books before us.com. And thank you, Tim Alexander. Back tomorrow with Hardy Schlanger and amazing guests coming up. Every-